This video is for section uh, four, sorry, chapter four, section one, and this is the end of this section. But I have gone back to page 197. I just want to point out the probabilities, and that will lead us in to the last one that we're talking about. So in this chapter, you've been learning about, in this section of this chapter, you've been learning about classical probability, and I wanted to reiterate that you do not actually have to perform the experiment to determine the probability. Like when you think about a coin, a coin has two sides. If you're trying to land on tails, that's one out of the two. Another thing that we talked about in this section was empirical probability. On empirical probability, you would listen to a video from the author, but I just want to go back and add that these empirical probabilities are verifiable by observation or experience rather than the theory or the pure logic. And you had different examples like this one right here was just talking about experience and collecting some data about how many people are driving, flying, or taking a bus. And again, that is based on observation or experience and not just, well, I know if I flip a coin or roll a die, there are two different classifications of probability. That's going to lead us to the last part of this chapter. I'm on page 204, and I want to read through most, if not all, of information about the law of large numbers before we get into subjective probability, which is the third type of probability for this section. When a coin is tossed one time, it is common it's common knowledge that the probability of getting ahead is 1 out of 2. But what happens when the coin is tossed 50 times? Will it come up heads 25? Not all the time. You should expect about 25 heads if the coin is fair, but due to chance variation, 25 will not occur most of the time. If the empirical probability of getting a head is computed by using a small number of trials, it is usually not exactly one half. However, as the number of trials increases, the empirical probability of getting a, a head will approach the theoretical probability of one half. If, in fact, the coin is fair, the phenomenon is called the law of large numbers. You should be careful to not think that the number of heads and the number of tails tend to even out. As the number of trials increases, the proportion of heads to the total number of trials will approach one half. And this law holds true for any type of gambling game, tossing guy, dice, playing roulette, and so on. And it should be pointed out that the probabilities that the proportions steadily approach may or may not agree with those theoret the <laughs> theorized in the classical model. If not, it can have important implications such as the die is not fair. Pit bosses in Las Vegas watch for empirical trends that do not agree with classical theories, and they'll sometimes take a set of dice out of play if observed frequencies are too far out of line with classical expected frequencies. I think that's pretty cool. So that brings us to our last probability, and the title of it is Subjective Probability. The third type of probability is called Subjective. Make sure you're taking notes, adding a note card, an index card. This would be, a great to write, would be great to write Subjective Probability on one side of your index card, flip it over, and jot some of these ideas as a study tool. Subjective Probability uses a probability value based on and I would put this highlighted part or something like this in your own words on that index card. An educated guess or an estimate. It is subject to someone's opinion. But it is educated. It is an estimate. And it is employing opinions, opinions, in exact formation. Hmm, information. I jot this down and I'll read a little bit more. In subjective probability, or a person or group makes an educated guess at the chance, at the chance that this event will occur. This guess is based on the person's experience and evaluation of a solution. For example, a sports writer may say that there's a 70% probability that the Pirates will win the pennant next year. 
A physician might say that on the basis of her diagnosis, there is a 30% chance that the patient will need an operation. A seismologist might say that there is an 80% probability that an earthquake will occur in a certain area. And these are only a few examples of how subjective probability is used in everyday life. All three types of probability, classical, empirical, and subjective, are used to solve a variety of problems in business, engineering, and other fields. I would like for you to read the probability and risk taking on your own, but I do want to go on to page 205 and finish up our chapter, or our section in our chapter. Can't get that right in the video. And we are in chapter four. We are in section one right here, for example. Most people think that their chances of dying of a heart attack are one in 20, when in fact they're almost one in three. Yikes. The chances of dying by pesticide poisoning are one in 200,000. The reason people think this way is that the news media sensationalize deaths resulting from catastrophic events and rarely mention deaths from a disease, unless you're in a pandemic, then they'll probably mention it then. When you are dealing with life-threatening catastrophes such as hurricanes, floods, automobile, automobile accidents, texting while driving, or during a pandemic, it is important to get the facts. That is, get the actual numbers from accredited statistical agencies or reliable statistical studies and then compute the probabilities and make decisions based on your knowledge of probability and statistics. That is one of the huge things I like about this course is hopefully it's going to get you to start questioning everything you're hearing, everything you're seeing, you know, where did it come from, who said it, who's sponsoring that advertisement. I mean, just really question and dig in what's going on around you. In summary, then, when you make a decision or plan a course of action based on probability, make sure that you understand the true probability of the event occurring. Also, find out how the information was obtained. Is it a reliable source? Is it somebody just spouting off? What is it? Weigh the cost of the action and decide if it is worth it. Finally, look for other alternatives or courses of action with less risk involved. And this include, concludes <laughs> section one and chapter four.